All right, welcome back to the Geek Branch Podcast. As you know, I'm the host, Tim, and these are my co-hosts, Dane and Devante. Uh, We were earlier discussing about everything that is going on with the PlayStation 5. Now we're discussing about China, just doing its China thing, and uh, they have (laughs) uh, banned kids from video games after 10 p.m., uh, they have a, uh, time limit of 90 minutes per day. And when I say 10 PM, it's from 10 PM to 8 AM, just in case you're wondering when they can start back up. So apparently after 8 AM, they can play games again. Uh, and then they also, and it's not just kids, but people in general that live in China, there's a cap on how much they can spend on microtransactions. And, uh, the limit is between 28 and $57 a month. Um, so uh, a lot of people are curious how they're able to monitor the kids. Well, with China, their online s- services are very different uh, from uh, America. Uh, so uh, the one way people know who we are in America is through our Xbox Live, through our PlayStation Network, so on and so forth. Well, you have to have uh, a- an account with, I-, I assume, the government, a real ID Absolutely, account. Yeah. And so they know exactly who you are. And so when you log in and play your games, if you try to go past that time, they can essentially shut your internet access off. (laughs) Communism. Yes, communism at its greatest. Uh, (laughs) I mean, I get, like, I think it it sounds, if it wasn't for the government getting involved, I understand why parents would want to maybe cut off their kids from playing for a set amount of time. Yeah, but you can do that within your own household. Yes, it should never be the government involved. Well, we're American. Yes. We, we have freedom. Yes. So uh, the reasoning uh, for uh, this, it's been uh, talked about for a while. Uh, actually, it might seem sudden to us, but it's a thing that uh, China's been working towards for a while. The reason is, is uh, they are trying to address issues with video game addiction, uh, with nearsightedness, and poor academic performance across uh, a broad swath of society. That's what what they put for uh, when they translated it. I think only one of those things was a real issue. And that was the nearsightedness. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's only one of those issues that can be solved by stopping people from gaming. Yes. Which is nearsightedness. <laughs> Eye damage caused from excessive gaming. Because those other two, taking away people's games, it's not going to fix. No, kids are creative. They are going to find a way. To distract themselves eternally. Yes. Or they'll find a way. I don't know how, but they will find a way to still play these games. I mean, well, Chinese hackers are prolific, so yes, so they'll they'll figure Ooh, out a way. I don't know what society's beef with video games is, but they just need to stop. Well, uh, society's beef is is that, I mean, we're adults, obviously, but most adults are in the belief that you should grow up, and with growing up, you shouldn't uh, have fun. Well, no, it's just that, like okay. So, let's, well, you, be, let's well, be honest and here. It, it, they view it as childlike. Well, yes, yes. But, I mean, the problem is just the overconsumption of entertainment. Yeah. And, I mean, we're guilty of it, too. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, mean I, I consume media almost all the time. But think about it like this, though, right? It, it is not untrue to state that we consume more entertainment today than we did as children. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Without a doubt. Right. <laughs> and, uh-huh. and most likely, well, I mean, you may have had a very wonderful childhood then, but but more than likely, we're only going to continue to consume more entertainment as time goes on. True. Well, this guy, because you said uh, something about his childhood, he's he told me this week, and I was in awe, he had a PlayStation 2 with no memory card. <laughs> this guy had the struggles, okay? <laughs> He had to play a game all the way through in one go. In one go. Yep. So yeah. And if the power went out, you were you were you're out. screwed. Yeah, yep. I told him I was like, I don't know how you would be able to play a game like a uh, Xenosaga or anything like that. Oh, that had dude, like Xenosaga. I, I know. Oh. My brother played it, well, and I would watch it because it had like an hour long. You know, it's a movie, functionally, yeah. Amongst other things, the cutscenes together make a movie. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed watching him play it. Most games I don't care to watch someone else play, but that I could watch yeah, and Xenosaga play. Xenosaga was great, but more yeah. importantly, I feel you, bro. I lost my memory card for like a week. Childhood it was rough. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Rough. But anywho, anywho, my point being is that's obviously the issue is that we are becoming a particular type of consumer that 
no doubt over consumes a certain product, which in our case is entertainment. Yeah. To the point in which, well, we it consumes we, your life. Well, it, we do it to a strict like negative sum. Yeah. Right? That like we spend more money on consuming entertainment than we do, we we make. Not saying that's us, but there but are society people, as a whole. Yeah, there are people that are literally over consuming past their income. Right. Because it's because it's because people view it as an addiction. Well, you're right, and that's yeah. why it's because we see the same behavior in people that are addicted to things. Yeah, it's not necessarily an addiction as far as like the medical term is concerned, but it is like a societal precedent. Yeah, and but the government should never be involved on those sort of matters. Well, a liberal and just government should never be involved in these matters. We cannot use those words to describe the government of China. Right. Because they're not a democratic <laughs> country like we are. They're not a republic like we are. It's like yeah. an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. Yes. Uh, like a couple episodes of Black Mirror. They, especially because they already have that uh, the social point system from Black Mirror. Uh, That's already exists in China. Really? Yeah, the social point system. You, you didn't hear about that? Yeah, no. Okay. So um, you have a certain score. That is your good citizen score. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. It sounds like some 1984 Big Brother horrible nightmare. Yeah. Dystopian, even. Only China. Currently China. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Only in otaku. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Big Brother. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> That's going to be our official term for it now. It's no longer Big Brother. It's now Onichan. Onichan. Onichan is watching. Onichan <laughs> loves you. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh loves you. Oh, crap. China hates us now. I said Winnie the Pooh. You just got us banned out of an entire country. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> you got to make the thumbnail Winnie the Pooh now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, YouTube's going to flag us down. You don't think they're... <laughs> but they, they're, they're, they probably have their hands dipped in China, too. I'm sure. Everyone does. They're yeah. the largest market in the world. What can we do? I support China. Staying with Hong Kong. There you Everything go. that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. This absolutely. is unfortunate to hear about. China's just such a giant bully. Yeah. And not in the American way. We're bullies, too. But, like, we don't get this involved. No. Yeah, no. We, we're we're not down here controlling your mind, the minutia of your life. Yeah. You know I like I don't I don't I don't know why they care. Well, well, they care they care because those people to them are resources. Right. That they they view their citizens as a human resource and that resource is wasting all of its time and developmental potential playing video games. That's their opinion. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's a mentality that even their citizens have on their own family. Well, the older generation, but that's yeah, because the, the older, older generation ge came up with that mindset to begin with. A perfect example, um, uh, if Stacy's okay with me using this example uh, about her grandmother. Okay. Sounds yeah. like you're going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, <laughs> her uh, grandmother is old school Chinese uh, type. And so sh whenever she gets in an argument with Stacy's mom, she'll tell her, I basically made you to take care of me. You're going to take care of me. And that's the type of mentality that a lot of the older generation Chinese have, and that's how their government is kind of like, you know. Well, a lot of the Asian nations, with I guess the exception of South Korea, because they're the most heavily influenced by us. America. Yeah. Not to say that Japan isn't, but Japan... It's different. They still have some cultural things that is like, not going to change yeah, because we, of America. We couldn't mix. Yeah. yeah, we couldn't remove... They the, love the entertainment side of us. Yeah, yeah, but the, we couldn't remove the core aspects of uh, Japanese culture and the way... Because like, Japan not only remained isolated for so long during the shogunate period, but it also had a strong national spirit that yeah. never got broken down until you know the events of America's conflict with, us, with them in World War II. And so because of that, it's very hard to remove... Japanese traditions, unlike Korea, who had long since been influenced by its neighbors. It was conquered by Japan before World War II, and then before that, the ancient Chinese governments, you know, the dynasties of China, yeah. Ming, Qin, always had some influence over what used to be Joseon, you know, the, the old Korean Empire. Right. So between those, Korean culture is a lot more fluid and flexible and not as staunch as China and Japan's Japan. are. So that's the reason why they don't have the same issue. But um, 
we call, or at least it has been referenced, that those societies are pyramidal, yeah. as in the youngest generation supports the things above it. It's a pyramid. Yeah. So at that point, whoever is the youngest breadwinner of the family has a duty is the best way of putting it, I guess, or obligation to hold the weight of the previous generations on his back. Right. So it's like a pyramid. That's why we call them a pyramid society. We are the opposite way where it is most common that your parents are supporting you. And then behind your parents are your parents' parents supporting them. Right. So you have your grandparent raising the kid while the mom works. You see that type of society is very that's us. We're the opposite. The pyramid well, stands correct. Not a, mm. it, generally speaking, that's the way that yeah. the American nuclear... I never nuclear, had that, but yeah. Yeah, but the, the American nuclear family I mean, tends I had that with my parents, but I didn't have that with, with my your grandparents. grandparents. Which, that was because my parents moved away. Right, but, but when you look at the, the basic design of what an American family should be, yeah. our, t- our stereotypical American family, yeah. or the you know nuclear family as we call it, yeah. that's what it's meant to be. That the previous generations are the foundation, and we build the younger generations on top of them. It's the opposite in China. Yeah. And so now that they have this core cultural foundation that is built around that system, and you see that these kids are not only wasting money that should be sent back into the family to support that system via gotcha games and buying games. But not only that, but their potential future development, their studiousness, their career focus is being hemorrhaged by, you know, gaming and entertainment culture. Like we Americans are so susceptible to, and right. You know, um, that to them functionally threatens to break up that system. It, it, right. It's going to fail if it continues on this way. So they didn't have any other real method because their society doesn't allow for cultural change in a fluid manner than to bring down the big government hammer, which is the conclusion of what we just saw here. Uh, And so to us Americans, it looks unreasonable, insane, uh, like the government's brought down a big black jackboot on the back of someone's neck. But to them, it's a valid solution to what most likely is going to be a critical problem, especially because they're still recovering from the inherent flaws that were behind the one child system. Because obviously that makes that pyramid even that less stable. Imagine that if you had to support your parents and your grandparents as yourself just you not supporting with your family and that you have a brother or a sister. Did they do away with that system finally? Uh, yeah, well it's been outside of the law as far as like the legality of it, uh, as far as China's concerned for more than a decade now. But, um, I know they used to, I don't know if that's still the case, but they, they would view, it's uh, now a tax break. Well, they view women as half. So you could have two, Daughters. Well, that's that was during the transitional period. Yeah, I'm talking about during the transitional, transitional period. period. They viewed them as half because they 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 inherently saw the flaw in it only like half a generation in. So they yeah. immediately began to transition to fix the issue that was going to be caused by the population shrink. Because that's also what makes that pyramid that way is that when you look back at your ancestors, right? It should be that your parents had more children replace themselves than they are so yeah your mom and your dad had three kids replacing right. your mom your dad and adding one right. right so those three people are then supported by two and then supported by four which would be your grandparents two for each side right right but and that's how that pyramid is formed again but if you look at china there's only one child Yeah, or arguably, well, yeah, was only one child, or arguably with the transitional system, two, and the course you had two daughters. Yeah. Um. So what happens is then that one child supports two parents, supports four grandparents. Yeah. And that puts a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Yeah. You can't expect that. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, as Americans, we find it to be absolutely insane. Yeah. It should be the combined six supporting the three kids. Or more kids in that way. But you get my point. Well, you, you know, a lot of Americans, after a certain point, they do support the older generation. Right, but that's a long and slow trans transition. It's yeah. not expected of us until we're, like, 
it's fully settled. We we, yeah. we have a wife and kids of our own at that point, yeah. and we're expected to support our grandparents. Right. But we're talking about out of the door because their family is too connected. Like we we branch out from our families completely. It's more than reasonable to expect that you live in a different parent from a different state from your parents. Right. Right. That your career is not related to your family's well being. Like I said earlier, my parents moved away from their parents. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I don't imagine I'll end up doing that, but. It, it's a common thing here. Right, but that's within our cultural, you know, yeah. zeitgeist. Over there, it's not the way that it works at all. No, you don't move away from your family. So, yeah, so, so, and you are almost in a aristocratic sort of manner. You are a symbol or standout for your family. You are the leader slash uh, almost elected representative of your family. So your success is critical. Right. right. Your family only does so well as the leader of the youngest generation does. So if you go out and you become a doctor, right, or a politician or a lawyer or something that brings in a sufficient income as well as a good reputation, then all of a sudden your family is rising with you. And once again, directly opposed to that, which is the reason why you're not seeing as much citizen backlash from the older generations in relation to this new law being passed. Well, of course, they don't care about video games anyways. But yes, yeah, so not just because they're disconnected from it, but right. also because they see it as a way of solving an issue that directly affects them. Right. Right, so they're not. Because it's a different society than us. Right, and so all of this is to explain the greater context of this. I'm a little bit more culturally aware outside of you know our American spirit because we obviously would have a hard time understanding how this comes to be. But hopefully, that little explanation gives you more context as to why this is coming into effect and what it's doing to China and why some people in China would support it. Right, not that. Us as people, people born and born and raised in America, whatever, well, yeah, want that to happen. We obviously would sympathize with the generation that we're right. Well, know. because there was people that are like, well, I wouldn't be too surprised down the road that our government tries to make some sort of mm. real ID system, yeah, to where they can monitor us more. I mean, we've been so against it because we began to value our privacy more and more following, you know, the whole Patriot Act and the loss of uh, privacy in response to a security need following 9-11. So, like, America has incrementally, year after year, become more and more resistant to Big Brother. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're not fans of it at all. So, like, it's never going to happen here, not without a big inciting incident it can't be, no cultural push will ever cause it to occur right. just like the cultural pressure that china was under caused this law to come to it come into effect uh do you have any other thoughts on it oh no he said it all yeah i mean uh he has much more insight on that stuff than yeah. we do uh, i'm a little bit more connected uh, i of course love their entertainment as me and Devonte will attest to but i i've always been a student of their culture as well because it's almost diametrically opposed to ours. So and you want to understand right, why, why they are they are. Yeah, why something so opposite I, I've of us done, I, I've, I've, I've done my research on some of their stuff before, and, and I, I, I know it. I mean, I, I understand that they're different, but I think that there's a lot of younger age citizens in their country that is not going to be okay with it anymore well yeah because they're they're more and more generationally like us yeah. like and, and then the biggest thing about it for china and japan uh well even japan actually is completely out of the world game just for china um china generation that is adapting to us or is resembling a western culture yeah is just this recent generation yeah korea has had it two for a generations while. yeah at least two generations of korean culture yeah. has been shifting towards the west yeah this is the first they love us. Yeah, Western Chinese generation. Well, one of the big things was is that when they started getting some huge companies over there and having Americans have jobs over there and transitioning over there, like Samsung's a huge, like it's a yeah. t- city of its own, and there's a lot of Americans that live there. Yeah, I mean, Korea definitively had the strongest economic boom. Yeah. You know, it, it, it completely transformed itself following the Korean War, yeah. and I think it only took about three decades. So it's a real big explosion both culturally and economically, economically. for them. Uh, so oh, yeah. they've had at least two strong generations of strong Western influence. Right. China has only had this one. Yeah. So if, and movies have a big part of it. Yeah. The movie industry. Yeah. Especially how Hollywood is related to China at this point as well. Yeah. But um, 
as it goes, I think that if this is not the tipping point generation, and we're very close to it being, especially... In, I think it is. At, with Hong Kong, the Hong Kong situation going yeah, on, it, things it, are going to change over there. If this is not it, then definitively the next one is. There won't be just one guy standing in front of a tank this generation. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, there's no... Well, there's never going to be a repeat of Tiananmen Square. No, but China. I'm just saying, that to that equivalent, there, there will be more yeah. to stand up this time. And it's going to be student protests, young, yeah. young people... It's it's definitely going to be a cultural revolution, either at the tail end of this generation, maybe in the next two or three years, yeah. or at the beginning of the next generation coming of age. Yeah. Like when our kids are 14, 15, 16, right. we'll see it hit. So when we're about in our 40s. Yeah. Yeah. Because China, China can't bear to remain as Except it for is. Except you, you'll, you'll be in your, your 30s. Yeah. <laughs> started early. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, in, in some ways, that is very wise. In mm-hmm. other ways, because eh. you'll because you'll bag. be you'll you'll be the cool young grandpa one of these days. Some mixed bag. Yeah, no, yeah. it's you know everything has its ebb and flow. But I, I think that uh, just to witness it is an yeah. amazing thing to be alive and to see this giant change in China's cultural zeitgeist and how scared their their uh, government is. Yeah, I mean they clearly are if they're trying because they're trying to ban so many things right now. There's so many American stuff that they're trying well, to ban. It, it's kind of like uh, the my analogy for it would be this: Imagine that you're driving your car uh, on the highway, and you know it's an eight lane highway, and there's no barricade in the middle, and you're slowly losing control of the steering wheel because that's it, what's happening. Yeah, it's slowly turning. No matter how much strength you put into it, no matter how hard you grip it, no matter how much you try to pull it back to the right lane, it's slowly sliding out of your control. Right. And that fear that you're going to go careening into the other lanes and crash in some horrific way is the same fear that's driving China to these drastic measures. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, so China, like I said, just being China, and they decide to ban kids from playing video games at a set amount of time and... We'll never understand it, but that's just part of how their government runs. Uh